steering wheels have been allowing us to point our majestic horseless carriages wherever we want to go with just a simple rotation for over a thousand years. But for as simple a job as steering wheels may have, there are plenty of reasons why you might consider changing yours out. Maybe yours just doesn't feel right in your hand, or maybe it's too big to comfortably get in and out of the car, and maybe you smash your knees into it all the time. Or maybe you just don't like looking at it. In my case, it's all three. So today we're gonna yank out Today, I'm gonna to show you how to remove your old steering wheel, including how to deal with all that airbag stuff, and I'll show you what to look for when you're buying a new steering wheel, like how to know what size to buy and all that, and then I'll show you how to install it. I'm Zach, and this is Money Pit. How do you like my Miata? Yeah? <laughs> Thanks. I know, it is pretty sick. Yeah, we're gonna take the steering wheel off today, yeah. Honestly, one of the things that annoys me most about this car is the steering wheel because I don't fit under it. My knee, anytime I try to go from the gas pedal to the brake, God forbid I try to do like a heel toe type thing, I just smash my knee into the steering wheel. The seat's all the way back, I don't even have a floor mat. I've got as much room as this wheel allows me to have and it's just not enough. So we're going to go smaller and bring it a little closer to me. Oh. All right, so the first thing we need to do to take the steering wheel out is actually in the trunk. We need to disconnect the battery with this 10 millimeter. All right, now with the battery disconnected, move up to the front and take off the airbag with this same tool. All right, so on the back of the Miata steering wheel, there are four 10 millimeter nuts which hold the airbag on. So we gotta take this off. And I guess, realistically, when you're playing with the airbag, it's a decent idea not to sit directly in front of it. Okay, so now we gotta disconnect these connectors, which, are the horn and the airbag. Okay, and then there's a rope. And that's an airbag from 1994. Probably doesn't work. All right, before we go any further, we are gonna make sure our steering wheel is perfectly centered. That looks great. And then at this point, you're gonna wanna mark your steering shaft if there's not already a mark for a top dead center. And it looks like we've got a little tiny indentation from the factory here, so I'm not gonna mark it. We'll use that as our mark. Now we can pull off this, I think, 21 millimeter nut, and that'll let the steering wheel come off. Okay, so now we've still got the nut on there a little bit, and we'll try to break the steering wheel loose. It's been on there for a long time, after all. There we go. Take the nut the rest of the way off. There she is. So, since the early 1990s, steering wheels with airbags became commonplace, and here in the US, they were mandatory as of 1998. These airbags, they're designed to react within the first tens of milliseconds after an impact and fully inflate within 60 to 80 milliseconds to keep your old noggin safe any sooner than that or any longer than that, and it could actually injure you more than it helps you. But while it is a big, gigantic, old, and clumsy airbag, it's still an airbag, and I don't remove safety measures from a car lightheartedly. Now, there are, of course, things that you can do to help make up for the lack of an airbag. For example, you can add multi-point seatbelt harnesses, but to do that, you have to install a roll cage or a roll bar or at least a harness bar that's sturdy enough to attach them to. And then you have to wear harnesses all the damn time, which kind of sucks in a daily. But for the Miata, that's fine. We're gonna add a roll bar. We're gonna add harnesses. We're gonna add seats and all that stuff, and we'll do it pretty soon. If you don't wanna have to wear harnesses all the time, it's probably best to leave the stock steering wheel and airbag in place. So much room without the steering wheel. God, get used to that. All right. The factory size on the Miata steering wheel is a 365 millimeter diameter, and that is way too big for us. There are many size options available on the market from like 280 millimeters to like 380 millimeters, which is a pretty wide range. So what do we choose? Well, we gotta think about some stuff. For one, you need to remember that the smaller the wheel is, the more quickly you'll be able to rotate it from one position to another, which means it'll be a little bit more responsive feeling but it'll also require a little bit more effort. Think of the difference between a quarter inch ratchet versus a half inch ratchet. You get a lot more leverage the bigger tool you're using. That is all to say that if you have power steering, it really shouldn't make much of a difference, which is great because I need a smaller wheel to free up this leg room. 
But there's another way to free up some more leg room without shrinking the wheel anymore, and that's by bringing the wheel further towards my body. So when I sit in the car now, pop this thing on, you can see that the wheel is actually pretty far away from me. My arms are fairly outstretched because I have the seat all the way back. But if we pretend to bring the wheel a little closer to me, I still have plenty of room to turn the wheel, but I get a little bit more knee room and that's what I want. All right, so sitting in the car and imagining the depth of your wheel is pretty easy, but it's pretty difficult to really imagine the change in diameter of a steering wheel and how that'll feel. So there are a few things you can do when you're trying to nail down your new steering wheel size. You can talk to other people especially other people that have the same car you have and already have aftermarket steering wheels because they've been through this and they've got a data point that you could benefit from. You get on the forums also. There's a lot of people that have aftermarket wheels with a lot of opinions on them and they'll tell you how tall they are too so you get a good gauge of what you're getting into. There's another thing you can do which really worked out for me and I think it's the best thing you could do. You can borrow a buddy's. This is my roommate's wheel. It's a 330. It's got this nice offset. And uh, to be honest, I'm not sure if this is the right size. But rather than buying one and finding out that way, I'm just gonna borrow my buddy's, install it, see how it feels, and we'll go from there. I think that's the best way to do it. I'm not gonna end up owning something that I don't love. Now, another thing to think about before you go installing your new wheel is what to do about your steering wheel electronics, your horn and your airbag wiring. Most aftermarket wheels are gonna come with a horn button that may take a little bit of wiring up, but it's usually very easy. It's just two wires, a positive and a ground. But the other thing to think about is your airbag. So now that there's not an airbag, the car's computer sees no airbag and it sees that as an issue. So now we need to figure out how to trick this thing into thinking there's an airbag in place. So the first thing we're gonna do is install the resistor to trick the airbag light. So I'm gonna cut off this airbag harness and solder in this 3000 ohm resistor in line or in series uh, and that'll trick the airbag light. But first let's talk about soldering because it's really easy and really handy. All you gotta have is the right stuff, which doesn't take that much. You need to have some flux, which we'll put on to our little joint, and then that will clean the joint and suck the solder in to all of our copper strands. We've got a 6040 rosin core wire solder here, which is what I like to use, and a soldering gun. This is 100 watts, gets nice and hot, and it'll solder stuff. That's all you need. We're basically just gonna put heat on the joint, get the tip on there nicely, and just kind of wait and let it get hot. So now we've got our first joint soldered. Uh, I've got a piece of heat shrink on there that I'm about to shrink. So to do that, I got my heat gun. Lovely. Okay, let's solder that other one. And you gotta make sure you get the joint hot enough when you're soldering. Uh, if you solder and your solder ends up looking really dull or gray, your joint was probably too cold. It should look nice and shiny once you're all done. Voila. We're gonna heat shrink this puppy the rest of the way up. All right, so that was, uh, that was the tough part, I guess. Really, it's time to put that wheel on. Or the hub first, I guess. And this one's made by Works Bell, and it connects your aftermarket wheel to your factory steering shaft. It's pretty simple. Steering shafts have splines on them, like these, that your factory steering wheel slips onto and then is bolted down onto, so that when you turn it, it doesn't just slip. It grips all these little spine teeth. Most aftermarket steering wheel hub manufacturers will have a catalog on their website so you can find the right hub for your car with the right amount of splines and diameter for your steering shaft. However, that's not the only thing to be thinking about, because there are a couple different bolt patterns for different kinds of steering wheels. Probably the most common bolt pattern for aftermarket steering wheels is this one. It's called the Momo pattern and a bunch of other things. It's a 70 millimeter circle, six bolts, so six by 70 millimeter bolt pattern, and the top bolt hole is positioned at top dead center. Most aftermarket hubs will have this pattern. It's one of the most universal, one of the most common patterns you'll come across. But then you've got Nardi and personal steering wheels, which use a six by 74 millimeter pattern. In this case, this nice works bell hub has both. Ultimately, I'm probably gonna buy a Nardi, so I'll still be able to use this hub, but I can also test this Momo with it. How nice is that? So when you're looking at hubs, you also need to take its length or its overall height into consideration for a couple reasons. With this works bell hub, there are two lengths offered, a short one and a tall one. We've got the tall one here, which measures about 80 millimeters. So the height of this thing ultimately helps determine the depth of your steering wheel. The taller this is, the further your steering wheel is gonna stick out. It's pretty simple. But the hub is only one part of the overall steering wheel depth equation. Lots of people run quick disconnects. So ultimately, if this setup isn't deep enough for me, I can add a quick disconnect 
to give me a little depth. The other thing to consider when thinking of your overall steering setup depth is the offset of your steering wheel. So this Momo wheel has an overall height of about 65 millimeters, and that's info that's usually listed. So you can check this stuff and you can measure and make a pretty informed decision before you buy. So we're gonna start just with these two pieces, uh, no quick release, but if somehow I do need more depth, I can add one, it's pretty easy. There are these two little cutouts that match up with the clock spring here on the Miata. Uh, so you wanna make sure that they match up. And then we've got, can you see that little arrow there? There's an arrow that denotes top dead center. So we wanna match that arrow up or that upper hole with that dot on our steering shaft as good as we can. And there's a decent chance that we're not gonna be able to get it perfect, which is why I did this before doing an alignment, because if you can't get it perfect, it's not necessarily your fault. There's just not always a spline exactly where you need one. Uh, and then you have to alter your alignment to straighten out your steering wheel. So if that's the case, we'll be able to fix it next week. All right, we're gonna to torque this little Johnny down to 35 foot-pounds. Oh, there we go, that's all it takes. Hub's in place, now all we gotta do is attach our steering wheel. For that, we've got six little screws, five little screws, that's all you need. Do this part slowly because it's the best part. You don't usually get car part installs that are this easy and this rewarding. Okay, we give them a little cinch down, that's it. Well, look, I gotta go drive it, but I've got more room, that's for sure. The depth feels okay. I can still reach my stocks without much issue. I've definitely got more room. Still not sure if it's enough. I gotta go drive it. It already feels so much better just turning it. God, it feels so much better. I can get on the brake, I can heel toe, I can rev match downshift because the wheel's not in my way. This thing is gonna be so much more fun to drive out in the canyons and literally anywhere. It's already so much better. I'm so excited and glad that we did this. This is the thing you touch the most in the car. Make it what you want. Make it work for you, not against you. The thing was so in my way, that stock nasty wheel, but this makes the whole driving experience so much better. The only problem now is that we're a little off center, which I expected, that's not a big deal. We can fix that. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I really did because now we've got a new steering wheel in the Money Pit Miata, which it desperately needed. So check me next week. We're gonna do a full alignment on the car in the garage where we're gonna stay during this whole quarantine. I am still allowed to go on drives, as long as I don't get out of the car. Follow me on Instagram to see more of the Miata, a lot of behind the scenes and what's going on during the rest of the week at Zach Job on Instagram. Follow Donut Media at Donut Media. Oh, this car is so much better.